What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the 2025 Kia Sportage X-Line. Huge thank you to Bryant over at Safford Brown Kia of Manassas, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Sportage or any Kia product, then I'll be sure to have Bryant's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. It is a cloudy yet breezy day outside here today, so I apologize in advance if there is any wind noise in today's video. But just like usual, first I'm gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2025 Kia Sportage X-Line, and this particular one's been painted in ebony black. I wanted to preface this video by saying for 2025, the Sportage X-Line and X-Pro now get gloss black exterior accents. Other than that, not much has changed. But this particular one being the X-Line as standard, you get LED projector headlights with high beam assist, as well as LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals. Now I'm gonna take a few steps to the left and give you a front on shot of the Sportage X-Line. And you can see at the center of your front hood, you get the satin black Kia logo. When you come down just a little bit, you get the gloss black front grille with the gloss black accent color trim. This is what I'm referring to as the gloss black trim. Now when you come down just a little bit, you get the satin black lower grille with the gloss black grille surround. This piece right here also being the gloss black grille surround. And then on the outsides of your front bumper, you get the satin black outer grille both there and there. Now at the bottom of your front bumper, you get that satin black front chin and just beneath that front chin, you also get a plastic skid plate. And last but not least, the X-Line all wheel drive gets 8.3 inches of ground clearance. So like I said, you get that satin black front chin. That satin black front chin is also known as your satin black lower fascia. That satin black lower fascia leads into your satin black wheel arch moldings. And this one being the X-Line all wheel drive, you get a center locking differential. And this one being the X-Line, you get the 19-inch gloss black wheels that are wrapped in 235-55 Kumo Krugen HP 71 all-season tires. I'll give you a view of the tread pattern on these tires here real quick. And then I'm also going to let you know that you get rain-sensing wipers as standard. Now, coming on down the side, doesn't matter which exterior color you get, you're always going to get the gloss black mirror caps with the integrated turn signals. And as standard, these side view mirrors are manual folding and you will find your blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver side mirror and on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror. Now I'm going to take a few steps back and give you a side profile shot of this thing here real quick. And as you may be able to tell, I've said this a few times throughout the video, the X-Line is going to give you the gloss black exterior elements. So with that in mind, you also get the gloss black roof rails, the gloss black window trim. You get body color door handles with keyless access. Just keep in mind, however, the keyless access function is only on your front two door handles. The rear two door handles do not get the keyless access function. And then all the way down at the bottom of all of your passenger your doors you get the satin black door cladding with the gloss black accenting and that piece right there being the gloss black accenting now also found on your driver's side is your fuel door all you got to do push right here that will reveal it you do not get a capless filler neck however 87 octane will do you just fine Closing that back up, up top here, you get the body color shark fin antenna. You also get the body color roof spoiler with the integrated third brake light. You get a rear window defroster and your wiper is hiding up underneath there. I'm gonna try to pick that up on camera. That is where you will find your rear wiper. By the way, you also get LED tail lights as standard. Now, taking a few steps back, here is a rear three quarter shot of this thing. Not the best lighting now that the sun has come out when I'm at the back of the vehicle, but that's just how things go sometimes. Now. One thing about the taillights is that you get some gloss black trim that connects the taillights here. You also get the satin black badging back here with the Kia lettering and the Sportage badging. Kia lettering, Sportage badging. But the only satin chrome piece that you get is the X-Line badging. Now, coming to down here, that is where you will find your backup camera. You also get like the bottom half of, or the bottom quarter, I guess you would say, of your trunk itself is satin black. And then if you put your hand to the right of your backup camera and you press on that pad and lift up, that is how you open up the manual lift gate. If you wanted a power lift gate, you might wanna look into getting the $1,500 X-Line premium package, because that's gonna give you the smart power lift gate. Now, taking a look at what we got going on here in the trunk area, I think this is a pretty decent amount of storage space considering, you know, the size of this SUV. 
it's pretty on par with the other SUVs in its class. Now, if you wanted to fold down these second row seats for a little bit more space uh, for your cargo, you could pull down on this thing right there and a boom, second row seats fold down and you get an additional about three and a half feet of storage space. You get that same door looking handle thing on the passenger side of the trunk as well. Also found on the driver's side of the trunk is the halogen light, followed by the 12 volt power outlet. And by the way, this particular one's been optioned with the $175 carpeted floor mats. I do believe they get the X-Line badging on them. That is what that looks like. And then underneath all of this stuff is where you will find your spare tire. And that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the trunk area. I'm gonna close that trunk back up and we're gonna finish things off here at the rear end. So you can see that bottom piece of the trunk is satin black. That is also, um, or you also get a satin black lower bumper. One thing about the lower bumper though is that you get some gloss black accenting here. That is where your reverse light is. You also get four parking sensors integrated into your rear valence back here. And last but not least, you get a max tow capacity of 2,500 pounds. So not you know the most capable little SUV here on the market, but not the least most or not the least capable. You know there are some other vehicles on the market, little SUVs like this that have like a thousand pound max tow capacity. So 2,500 pound max tow capacity, you could pull a couple jet skis, you could pull a four wheeler or two, you can pull your utility trailer to the dump with all the brush that you got from your yard. Other than that, as long as it's under 2,500 pounds, you're gonna have no problem pulling it. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals the two and a half liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that produces 187 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque. It's made it to an eight speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 9.1 seconds. And if you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 23 miles per gallon in the city, 27 miles per gallon on the highway for 25 miles per gallon combined with all wheel drive. If you are looking for better fuel economy and a little bit quicker of a zero to 60 time, you might want to take a look at the hybrid models that they offer here with the Sportage. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you're enjoying the video, if you've learned anything thus far, please just take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, as mentioned earlier, you get keyless access as standard. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, press this button right here, and it will unlock. You can press that very same button again, and it will lock right back up. This is what the key fob looks like. It's satin black with some chrome accenting and going over the functions on it, starting from the top, you have your lock function, your unlock function, your panic function, and your remote start function. If you wanted to remote start this, all you have to do is lock it first, press and hold on this button right here and she will fire right up. And that is what the two and a half liter naturally aspirated four cylinder sounds like being fired up from the exterior's perspective. Now this one being the X-Line, you can only spec it with the black Syntex upholstery. We'll get more into that here in a second. I wanna start on the driver door panel. So at the top of the door panel, you get some vinyl wrapping. You have your satin chrome looking door handle. You have some faux wood grain trim power side view mirror controls, your unlock and your lock functions, automatic up and down windows in the front. You do not get automatic up or down windows in the back. That button is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. You get a spot you could set a phone, Syntex wrapped armrest that is nicely padded, a little bit of storage space, a spot you could set a water bottle, and this thing comes standard with a six speaker audio system. Now taking a look at these front seats, these front seats are very, very comfortable. And as standard, you get a 10-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar. You get a four-way manually adjustable front passenger seat. And as standard, these front seats are heated. Now stepping on into the interior, take a listen to what it sounds like when you close the door. And now I'm gonna walk you throughout the entire interior. So starting up top here, you get your tweeter in the A-pillar, you get your defroster for the driver window, you get the same thing over there for the passenger side. Then beneath that, you get an HVAC vent. These buttons are to brighten and or dim the gauge cluster as well as the backlit buttons. This is going to turn the traction control system on or off. And then to the right of that, if you pull on this, that is going to engage your parking brake. If you wanted to disengage the parking brake, you have to push your foot down against the brake, push against that and the parking brake will disengage. Now let's take a listen to the turn signal. 
That is what the turn signal sounds like here on the Sportage. And not only is that the turn signal control stock, that is also the high beam control stock and the headlight control stock. So all the way down is headlights off. It also lets you know over there on screen uh, that what the headlights are doing. So if you come up one, now that is headlights automatic. Up one more, that is parking lights on. And all the way up is headlights in the always on position. And then if you just push forward, that is basically turning the automatic high beams on. I like to leave it in automatic personally. And then zooming back out, you get a leather wrapped steering wheel. And just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen to it. That is what the horn sounds like here on the Sportage. And now going over the controls on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, pressing on that is going to, uh, basically your function to speak to the vehicle. You can tell the vehicle to turn the AC system to 61 degrees or something like that. Then you have your volume control knob here, uh, push up to volume up, push down to volume down. And if you just click on it, that is going to mute the audio system. Pressing on that phone button right there is going to pop up your phone stuff here on the infotainment screen. Uh, and then you have these two controls right here and both of these buttons are configurable buttons. So if I click on the mode button, it's gonna bring me into this screen. I guess the mode button is already set up. Is the favorites button also set up? Okay, so basically, it's, I'm gonna start with this star button first. So it's gonna bring you into this screen right here. Uh, and right now that button is set to nothing. You can have that button be bring you into your quiet mode, radio, media, on or off. Off, cancel a route, reroute. It's gonna bring you into your map stuff. It can be your home button for this screen here. Voice memo, privacy, any of these things here, but you can only choose one of them. Now that is a little bit different than the mode button here on the steering wheel. So right now the mode button is set to FM, uh, but basically the same premise behind this button is for the mode button, except with the mode button, you can select all of these. You can select three of them. You can select two of them, however many, however little, or however you know many you want, uh, you can select. So if you selected all of them, uh, then it's gonna bring you from Bluetooth audio into phone projection, to sounds of nature, to USB music. And it's gonna bring you down through all of these, and then it's gonna go back to the top and bring you down through all of those again. Or you can have it just be two of them, Bluetooth audio, FM, AM, XM, and it's gonna bring you between your different audio sources, but basically you can and select any of these as many few as many or you know however many you want that is what the mode button can be i hope that was a good explanation um and then pushing up on this is going to bring you backwards on a track pushing down is going to bring you forwards on a track so it's kind of opposite of what you would think that it would be uh, and then over here on the right hand side of the steering wheel these two buttons here are for your productivity screen located at the center of your gauge cluster this is for your lane keeping assist and then as standard with this thing you get cruise control you do not get smart cruise control so the trim level below this and the x line both i believe it's the ex and the x line both get cruise control they do not get smart cruise control every other trim level above the X line gets smart cruise control as standard. But anyways, here are just your regular cruise control settings. You do not get smart cruise control again. Uh, rain sensing wipers, this end stock here is for the rear wiper. Uh, moving this up and down is for this wiper right here. So right now that should be in the off position. Uh, and then moving over to here, I like how like it tells you on the screen that it is in off or auto, low or high. Uh, and then you also have like that little intermittent thing right there. Now moving into the gauge cluster on the right hand side, you have your tachometer. On the left hand side, you have your speedometer. Down here, you have your fuel gauge. Then you have your coolant temperature gauge. And then in the 4.2 inch productivity screen, you have your transmission status stuff, the fuel range. Right now, this is displaying a compass. That is for your lane keeping assist system. Uh, and then that right there is letting you know that the auto stop start system is active. Then you have your traffic sign recognition. So that is the speed limit sign, ambient exterior temperature, and the odometer. Now, if you wanted to navigate throughout that screen, all you gotta do is click right here, and then that will bring you into this secondary screen, which is going to show you your torque split. You come down one more, then you get your tire pressure stuff. You do have to be driving in order for it to display the tire pressure stuff. Uh, and then right here, you have your driver assistance features, and you come down one more. Uh, this is your attention level. Then you got your drive information, since refueling information, accumulated information, come down one more you got your auto stop start stuff it counts how long the auto stop start system has turned the vehicle off for i kind of like this screen right here but you know you can set it up to your liking but one thing about the um 
driver assistance screen right here is if you press hold okay here it's going to pop up your driver assistance stuff here on the infotainment screen just a little bit of nugget of information if you were wondering now i think if you get the upper trim levels this also turns into a 12.3 inch screen but right now it's just the 4.2 inch productivity screen located there at the center now moving over to this screen this is your 12.3 inch infotainment system with built-in navigation and wired apple carplay and wired android auto connectivity i really would like to see this have wireless carplay and wireless Android Auto here soon, but uh, that is not the case yet. But this is what your home screen looks like. You got the date, the time, the audio information, and then subtly over here, you have your navigation stuff. When you swipe to the right, this is what the secondary home screen looks like. So you can read all of those different things on screen right now. Quiet mode is basically going to turn the rear speakers off and it is going to lower um, the front speakers to a very minimal volume. You can see right there what it tells you that it does. Uh, and then you get all of your different stuff. Phone projection is for wireless car or wired apple carplay wired android auto connectivity you get your map stuff there everything else you can read and then swiping over to this secondary screen you get the key connect and all that kind of stuff this right here is going to bring you into that you can turn the display off you can do that stuff that's your home button this is your i believe driver profile uh, time, date, and then all of this stuff over here. I wanted to show you the setup screen because let's say you wanted to go into your driver assistance features rather than going into vehicle, etc. blah, blah, blah. The easiest thing to do is click on the magnifying glass and type in like driver assistance stuff. And then boom, driver, all your driver assistance stuff will pop up on the left-hand side of the screen. I think the magnifying glass makes things just very, very easy. When in doubt, look for the magnifying glass. Um, and that's really kind of about it for the screen. It is a very user-friendly interface. So that's why I don't feel like I need to spend too much time on it. And then beneath it, you get those two HVAC vents, hazard button there at the center that actually does flash with the hazards. And then down here is where things get a little bit interesting. And it's like, is this too much technology? I don't know, you guys can let me know in the comments down below. But right now, this is my volume control knob. This is my tuning control knob. And you can see right here, I have some climate control stuff to turn the front defroster on, the rear defroster on, the recirculating information or the automatic climate control system. And then to the right over here, I've got all of my shortcuts into map, nav. This is another favorites button. That is to go backwards on the track, forwards on the track, radio meter setup. I'm gonna show you this star. So you can see that star is not filled in, whereas the one on the steering wheel is filled in. It is the same premise behind this star on the steering wheel. So that star can you know, bring you into your Wi-Fi hotspot. It can do any of these things. But again, just like the other star, it can only do one of those things. So I'm gonna set it to none for right now. Uh, and then one thing, again, that was interesting about this, that I'm asking too much technology, like where are the climate controls? Well, what you gotta do, you gotta swipe right here. And now you have your climate controls and both of these knobs now are your temperature controls. So it's like, well, that's kind of weird. And if you wanted to turn it off, all you gotta do is click the driver one and it will turn the HVAC system off. But basically now you get your temperature controls. Isn't that just kind of a little bit weird? Both of your temperature readouts there, but a little bit weird, easy to use, but it's just like, that's a little extra. If you think that's a little extra, let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, beneath that kind of stuff, you have your 12 volt power outlet. You get a USB A port. And this right here is another USB C port. And you see that right there. It's like a little like IQ thing. Uh, if you set your phone down here, you get a wireless charging pad and that will illuminate in amber when the wireless charging pad is active. And then on your infotainment screen, up top here in the upper right hand section of the screen, uh, it lets you know that the wireless charging pad is charging a phone at the current moment. Um, and then when you come back just a little bit more, as mentioned, heated front seats as standard, you get three levels of adjustability here with your heated front seats, push button, start button. Uh, and if you wanted to control the transmission, you would go into drive, flip this over to the left, push up to upshift, pull down to downshift, go back into park. Two cup holders right here, but one thing I kind of like about the cup holder system here uh, is that if you don't have any cups to put in here and you just got stuff, you can push this away you can push this away and now it's just like storage space you know what i mean but let's say you go to mcdonald's it's only one person you're like ah, i need a cup holder boom click that now you got a cup holder but this one is still completely open but let's say you got a passenger they need a cup holder too boom right there now you got two cup holders very nice and usable system there uh definitely like that
And then back here, this is your hill descent control system. This is your auto hold function. Auto hold is basically uh, when you have that engaged, the vehicle will hold itself in place by itself with its braking system. And to go forward again, all you gotta do is hit the accelerator. This is to turn the auto stop start system on or off. This is gonna turn the rear parking sensors on or off. And this is going to pop up your backup camera. That is what the backup camera looks like. Uh, and then this is your drive mode selector. If you press on that, that is going to lock your differential. And it'll let you know that the center locking diff is active. Uh, but anyways, I want to go in between the different drive modes. You get four drive modes. You get your normal mode, you get your sport mode, you get your smart mode, and you get your snow mode. In sport mode, you can see everything turns to red. I think that's kind of cool. I'm going to leave it in normal mode for now. A little bit more storage space back here. Nicely padded armrest. Opening the armrest, you get no connectivity down in here. I'd say it's probably six inches deep, followed by eight inches this way. Um, so just keep that in mind. This is what the passenger side looks like. Very nice looking seats and they are very comfortable. Uh, you don't get a lockable lower glove box, but you get, you know, a decent amount of storage space in the glove box. Right now you can see your owner's manual in there. Uh, you still get quite a bit of storage space on the top. You can sit your napkins, your straws, and the essentials like that. Up top here, you get a standard rear view mirror. This is not an auto dimming rear view mirror. Then you get your roadside assistance stuff up top there. If you click on this light, this is your instant dome light on button. It's gonna turn on the interior dome lights. Uh, and then you see this button right here, when that is illuminated in amber, when you open up the doors, the interior lights will turn on. However, if this is not illuminated, now when I open up the doors, the interior lights will not turn on. So when the amber light is on, the lights will turn on when you open up the doors. Now, if you noticed, your reading lights and all of your dome lights are halogen. If you wanted all of the interior lights to be LED, you might want to look into getting the $1,500 X-Line premium package because that's going to give you the LED interior lights in addition to a panoramic sunroof. In addition to that package, if you did get the premium package, it would also give you the illuminating vanity mirrors and the power lift gate. But as you can tell, taking a look at the visor uh, you get a vanity mirror you do not get any vanity lights and then you also get this little clip right here you can set any small little paper product however what is nice is that the visors do slide in and out so when the sun is in those awkward positions you can protect yourself uh, and then up top here you get a driver opu panel front passenger opu panel and that's kind of about it for what we got going on in these front seats as mentioned i think these seats are very very comfortable that is just my personal opinion uh, but i think you guys will agree if you do end up sitting in it now i'm looking for my phone because i want to give you guys a little demonstration uh, of what the sound system sounds like because it does actually sound pretty good for a standard sound system i'm gonna start this over again just take a listen i'm gonna turn the volume up got a bass drop coming in here soon right about here So the sound system sounds very, very good. Um, it's got that nice bass to it, but then it's also got the clarity as well, and it does not get distorted when the bass comes in. So I definitely like the sound system for being a standard sound system. Now I'm gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen. You can take a look at the one option that this has, which is the carpeted floor mats. Take a look at everything that you get as standard. I am just going to highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2025 Sportage X-Line is spec'd is $33,640. This is actually very nicely equipped for the money. Uh, I love the way that the exterior looks with all the gloss black accenting. I just wish that it did have smart cruise control of which you can get on every Sportage above the EX and the X line. But I do want to show you what we got going on in the rear seats before moving into the driving portion of the video. So taking a look at what we got going on back here first, I want to fold this seat right back up. Uh, again, you do not get the automatic up or down windows back here. Right now the window is locked. Now it should be unlocked and the window should go down. Windows do go all the way down. Same thing as the front, you get the Syntax wrap armrest, spot you could set a phone, armrest is padded, you get a speaker and a little bit of storage space. This is what these second row seats look like. Uh, and pay attention, this is how you recline these seats. I'll show you that in a second. Up top here, you get an OPU panel, a spot you can set your dry cleaning. You get an LED dome light. You do not get a dry cleaning hook on that side, but you do get the OPU panel. Seat back pocket behind both the driver and the front passenger seat. You get a USB-C port here, USB-C port there. And the reason you have these hooks here is so you can connect the USB-C cord 
and like basically wrap it around right there so it's not just flopping on the ground. Two HVAC vents, and then beneath that, a little bit of storage space down there. Now, as mentioned, you can recline these seats. So if I pull up on that lever I showed you guys, you get quite a bit of reclinability, and these seats are just very, very comfortable even here in the rear. Now, opening this up, you get a center phone down armrest with two cup holders, and the armrest is nicely padded. I'm 5'9", adjusted behind myself, plenty of knee and leg room. Here's another view of my knee and leg room, and when it comes to headroom, I've got plenty of that as well, even if I was in the upright position. Plenty of headroom. But I do want to show you one more thing. You get a spot you can set your phone here while it is charging as well. But, you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior. So, I want to see what this thing's like to drive, as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So, I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now on to the driving portion of the video. Take a listen. Pretty decent acceleration. Brakes are pretty good as well. I will say the brake pedal is a little bit on the spongier side, but it also does feel like it's got just that linear feel that I do like personally. Um, so I think for an SUV, I really do like the brake feel of this thing. It just feels how you want a brake pedal to feel. Right now I've got the lane keeping system on right now and it is keeping me within the lane. I'm not steering and you can see that we were there for a second uh, keeping maintained in the lane. So that is definitely a nice thing to the lane keeping feature. Uh, it does help you stay maintained in the lane. Now I am gonna do a right hand turn here. And honestly, you know, this is one of like the really truthfully, one of the most comfortable uh, SUVs that I've done videos with. Like just like the seats themselves are just very, very comfortable. You feel very nicely supported. You got the two-way power lumbar, so you got that going for you as well. Just a very, very comfortable seat and a very comfortable ride as well. Now, you guys seem to just absolutely love the Sportages because whenever I do a video with a Sportage, it does really good views. Um, so it seems like, at least from my perspective, that these cars are actually pretty popular. Uh, and I can see why. You know, they look pretty, that thing's sweet looking. Um, they look good. They drive great. They're very comfortable. And they're also fuel efficient as well. And one thing that is nice, and I think some of you guys will appreciate, uh, is that it also comes in a hybrid. Take a listen to acceleration. So just for around town accelerations and stuff like that, it's got a good bit of get up you know what I mean like when you start flooring it and stuff like that you're gonna be like man this thing doesn't feel all that quick however you know in just stoplight to stoplight accelerations and daily driving situations I don't think you're gonna feel like this thing needs any more power than it has uh, a couple other things I wanted to say the infotainment system easy to use um, you know looking out the side mirrors not too bad of a blind spot your blind spots really there in the D pillar area uh, but then again, you do have the blind spot monitoring, so you don't have to worry as much about the uh, blind spot. However, one of the other, a couple of the other higher trim levels, they have the blind spot view system, which will pop up a camera uh, on your digital gauge cluster, showing you a view of what that looks like in addition, what your blind spot looks like in addition to, uh, you get another one of those lowered Chevys back there, or GMCs, it's pretty funny, you get two in one place. Uh, but basically, that's gonna like double mitigate you from running into somebody in your blind spot, so. Um, just a you know very comfortable drive you know from the way that it is insulated from the outside world uh, the seat comfort all the safety features that you get I mean it's just a very very nice SUV uh, and it comes in at a great price as well you know 33,000 bucks and some change uh, is very you know it's a good deal in the day in today's day and age of landscape of things you don't need really any more than this if you're looking to spend money on a vehicle you know you can spend a little bit more money and you can get the next trim level up and that will give you uh, the smart cruise control which is really the only thing that I really care about that this thing is missing you know some of the upper trim levels get the 360 degree view camera system and stuff like that but you know you don't need that especially for an SUV like this it's really not that large so you don't need the 360 cam is it nice to have yes the only feature that I would like to see on this thing uh, is the smart cruise control system you know because even the base model Subaru Foresters get uh, adaptive cruise control so it would be nice to have that other than that suspension is very comfortable just the entire ride of this thing is very comfortable it's insulated from the outside world pretty well as well uh, and the standard sound system is actually better than you would expect it to be. So for $33,000, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find something that 
feels nicer than this and is more comfortable than this or as comfortable as this but really that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and i cannot reach my goal without your support so if you enjoyed the video if you learned anything from the video please just take a second to like comment and subscribe i would greatly appreciate it that stuff really helps me grow um, but again that is it for today's video i will catch you all in the next one peace